Hi guys, here's Paula and in this video I will talk about the shocking discovery that the Tampas ozone treatment may be causing hemolysis. I've been practicing ozone and been following news in the ozone community for the past 13 years. Here I will discuss new potentially alarming information which has come forward about one of the most popular ozone applications. The TENPES has taken the world of ozone therapy by storm ever since it's been developed by Dr. Lahodny a few years ago. It is supposed to deliver unprecedented health outcomes by using equally unprecedented ozone amounts. But now, as it turns out, the TANPES could be doing more harm than good. Or at least that's what Ukraine's leading ozone researcher claims. And he says he's got proof to back it up. But first, some shameless self-promotion. If you'd like to support me making these videos, please go to thepowerofozone.com slash thank you where you have the possibility to live out your wildest philanthropic inclinations. Please be informed that where I am right now, we are currently battling a raging climate catastrophe. So we need all the help we can get. Today, again, we had massive amounts of climate with 51 degrees Fahrenheit or 11 degrees Celsius with overcast skies, some light drizzling rain and no wind at all. So as you see, the situation is dire. Thank you very much for the needed support. If you can't send money, please send prayers. Back to the ozone news. Since the introduction of the TANPES, the number of ozone doctors who practice it has skyrocketed. Many doctors claim that it's the most effective ozone treatment ever and the only one which is able to stimulate stem cell production. During the tan pass, two liters of blood are drawn and mixed with a total of two liters of ozone in 10 different steps. The blood and ozone are mixed under a light pressure of maximum 0.8 bar. This, so we were told, protects the red blood cells from being destroyed. But now Professor Nazarov, a Ukrainian biophysicist and ozone researcher, is putting a stop to the hype and says that tan pass causes hemolysis so the very destruction of red blood cells which it was supposed to prevent. He says this is dangerous to human health and calls it a barbaric method. The proof, he says, can be found in a video from August 31st of 2019 where he tried to recreate the TANPES without using a TANPES machine. There he also presents two different blood vials after they have been centrifuged. One vial contains blood, which has been treated according to the simulated TANPES technique. The other vial contains blood, which has not been treated at all. We see that the untreated blood has separated into red blood cells at the bottom and the clear yellow blood plasma on top. This is how healthy blood should look like. No hemolysis is visible. The treated blood, on the other hand, shows a red tinge to the blood plasma, which is a sign of hemolysis. There's one major problem with this experiment though. The professor has used pressures which are more than twice as high as what is really used. The video seems to show that the pressure goes up to nearly two bar, but during a proper tan pass, the pressure never exceeds 0.8 bar. So it appears that the professor hasn't done his homework on the tan pass, which is a pity because all he needed to do was check out my blog. The result is that his experiment must be considered invalid since it did not respect the required parameters. So does this settle the issue? Unfortunately not. Because in spite of Professor Nazarov's faulty test, it still appears that there is indeed hemolysis happening during the TANPES. But the real evidence doesn't come from Professor Nazarov, but from one of his readers. One of them commented on Professor Nazarov's Facebook post by uploading a picture of his eye set. The picture shows the egg-shaped container which is typically used during the TANPES procedure. Although the machine itself is not visible, it's safe to assume that the treatment was performed correctly, since those types of containers are made specifically for the German TANPES machines. The blood in the container clearly shows hemolysis. So it appears that yes, the tan pass does indeed lead to destruction of red blood cells. But what does it mean and how bad is this? Should you stop doing the tan pass right away? If you ask Professor Nazarov, it's a clear yes. He describes the result as hemolysis of blood being visible in all its repulsive nudity 
and says it's as if someone cut off an organ since red blood cells cannot ever be repaired again. He calls the 10 passes unforgivable human experiments and classifies them as a clear health risk. This does sound alarming, but is he correct in his assessment? Some rush to celebrate his groundbreaking discovery and his dedication to protect patients. But is this celebration justified? Did Professor Nazarov's finding really uncover a grave danger to patients' health during the TAN pass? Well, let's look at the facts. Fact number one. Professor Nazarov claims that the TAN pass is dangerous, yet he does not provide a single piece of evidence of actual harm. On the contrary, he admits that the TAN pass actually produces positive health outcomes, only that they're, in his opinion, minor and temporary. I quote, They just feel some relief, meaning the patients. The reason for this relief is that ozone kills predominantly old red blood cells that have lost functionality. Therefore, blood flow is rejuvenated, the oxygen transport function of blood increases, and the patient feels better. Additionally, he compares the tempest to the ancient art of phlebotomy, saying, With the same success, a doctor can give him bloodletting, as recommended by medieval medicine. So Professor Nazarov admits that the hemolysis may be responsible for some of the positive reports from tempest patients. Fact number two, hemolysis takes place even during major autohemotherapy, the smaller cousin of the tempest which does not use any pressure and have the concentration of the TANPES. During a course on ozone therapy that I completed in Germany, I was instructed that for this reason the major autohemotherapy was not to be performed on people with severe anemia. It is fine in cases of light anemia, which shows that hemolysis is not as catastrophically bad as Professor Nazarov would like us to believe. Fact number three, Professor Nazarov is a producer of Ebu machines, so he has a vested interest in discrediting the TANPES. It would serve him to influence public opinion away from the TANPES and towards the Ebu, two ozone treatments with a comparable price tag. Professor Nazarov, of course, refutes those allegations and argues that he is only motivated by science and patients' safety. Fact number four, no one has ever tested the Ibu for hemolysis. During Ibu, up to seven liters are drawn and transported through the machine, stirred mechanically and then reinfused. So it's logical to assume that this would also create some red blood cell distraction. Professor Nazarov disputes that, but as of now, no independent third party has ever tested this. Fact number five, some patients report improvement in their health weeks after their last 10 pest treatment. I've always wondered how those reports could be explained. Now it all makes sense. Since it can take several weeks for the body to make up for the lost blood cells. So the hemolysis may be actually an added benefit. Summarized, we can say Professor Nazarov's findings do not explain away the many reports of people who have been greatly helped by the 10 pest. Some have seen dramatic improvement in chronic health problems within a very short amount of time, which could not be resolved with conventional medical methods, including surgery. The professor has also not been able to provide proof that people who undergo the TANPES see any actual damage to their health. On the contrary, he admits that the TANPES does produce benefits. So we have an ozone expert creating panic, talking about threats to human health, describing the TANPES as an unforgivable human experiment and as a barbaric method because, I quote, blood flow is rejuvenated, the oxygen transport function of blood increases, and the patient feels better, and because they just feel some relief. Well, bloody hell, then you better stop the TANPES immediately and run for your life, because God forbid you could find some relief. I personally find this discovery interesting in that it busts an often repeated claim. I was always wondering, is this really true that the pressure protects red blood cells? It didn't make much sense to me, so I'm glad that this has been clarified. Although it may make sense to wait if those findings of hemolysis can be confirmed by other users before drawing final conclusions. In either case, I don't see a reason to panic or discourage people from doing the tan pass. As explained, it may even be that the hemolysis adds another beneficial factor to the treatment. So the shocking discovery, as far as I'm concerned, is a nothing burger. 
Speaking of burgers, if you ever happen to be in Spain, eat the beef patties at McDonald's. And yes, I did use the M word, McDonald's. Just make sure to ditch the bun and just eat the beef. It's so good, it's worth traveling to Spain just for that, just to visit a McDonald's. I'm not joking. McDonald's say they're using 100% Spanish beef, so I don't know what the Spaniards do to those damn cows. Maybe they're sing them lullabies, I don't know, but the meat is just mind-blowing. And talking about hemolysis, eating beef is one of the best ways to help your body make new blood cells. So 10 passes and beef patties, how about that? I think this could be huge. Like huge. Like huge. Like huge. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel.